goes his head. Wibbly wobbly goes his tail. Oh, I'll give you a fiver for it. Oh, I was hoping for more than that. It's as good as new, Mr. Weeks. I never let Timothy play with it. He used to sit for hours looking at the box with his wistful little face. So good, eh? Down. Careful! No. <laughs> Children grow up so quickly, don't they, Mr. Weeks? It seems only yesterday that I was wiping Timothy's nose for oh, him. Probably was only yesterday. <laughs> well, I'll be back in a day or two when I've been through his big toy cupboard. Oh, Mother, here you are. Father said he thought you'd be here. It's just that I want... Is that my muffin? <laughs> Have you sold my muffin? My muffin? No. That, that muffin is stolen, Jerry. That is a hot muffin. <laughs> Nonsense! I bought that muffin Christmas 1954. Eighteen and fourpence. Christmas 1954, Mother, you bought me a tin globe of the world, if you remember correctly, which Father sat on. Dented the Himalayas. <laughs> this, I bought here last week. Tell her, Jerry. Yeah, well, it could be the same one. What do you mean it could be? What do you mean could be? I bought it here 12 quid. Oh, how typical. Buying toys at your age. And you're still crossing the road with the lollipop man. I saw you. <laughs> you told me to, Mother. And this is not a toy, by the way. Don't call it that. This is an antique. This is an investment for my future. You know, my pension. Who's going to look after you when I'm 75? Well, I will, of course. You'll be 101, Mother. <laughs> if anything happens to me, I'll look after you from the other side. Have you got anything with vampires at all? Just you know, <laughs> a long bit of wood. I'll sharpen the end myself. I heard that. Are you still here, Mother? Good heavens, it's broad daylight. Shouldn't you be hanging upside down from a belfry somewhere? <laughs> I'm going straight home to burn your beanos. <laughs> Lad was taller than you are. <laughs> Only when he was on his horse. <laughs> She's under some strain at the moment, you know. Only the washing machine became incontinent on Sunday. <laughs> she wasn't sure whether to send for the doctor, the plumber, or the vicar. <laughs> Look, she's a lovely person, your mother. Yes, I... She's one of my regular suppliers. Well, I know that. You don't have to tell me that, but this but is my... Keep off! 20 quid that'll cost you. 20 quid? Yeah, well, the price is up. Muffins are going like hot cakes this week. <laughs> but only to me. Look, this is unique. I could go 10 years and not see another one. Fool to myself, really. That's true. There we are. Hi. Oh, wait a minute. Finella, it's a friend of mine. Finella! 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 I can't see you. I haven't got you. Look, look, allow me, Jerry. This is Mr. Weeks. This is Finella. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weeks, uh, you know, he's in the antique business, you know, buying and selling. <laughs> well, he sells and I buy. <laughs> he has very low overheads, and I'm one of them. <laughs> I've got to pick up the inflatable. I will do that for you, don't worry. Yourself. Oh, inflatable woman, eh? No, no, not inflatable. Oh, no, an inflatable thing, you know, for the children to jump up and down on. Fenella runs, you know, children's puppet theatre on a narrow boat, don't you, on the canal. Very nice. Listen, I will collect it for you, so don't you worry. All right. Um, here's the address. Uh-huh. Can I really trust you with eighty pounds? <laughs> Honestly, Vanella, at the library, where Miss Peabody is in the lavatory, I am in sole charge of the fine books. <laughs> <coughs> and a copy of The Wit and Wisdom of Leon Britton, which is a very rare book indeed, as you can imagine. <laughs> well, don't drop it down a drain or something stupid. <laughs> the games lovers play. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, did you hear that? So there'll be electricity there. The little crackle. No. Nope. Well, it's there, all right. This is my lucky day. <laughs> who is it? It's me, Mother. And who might me be? You've only got two children, Mother. And though Muriel has feminist tendencies, I don't think her voice is broken just yet. <laughs> oh. Have you wiped your feet? No, I found these shoes things on them, Mother, so I wiped <laughs> better. What are you, uh, what are you doing with the coal, Mother? We've got visitors coming. <laughs> You're not going to paint it white now, are you? I'm sorting them out. I only want big lumps. Oh, just like the gravy, I see. <laughs> I don't want people thinking we buy nutty slack, especially at summer prices. Now, I want you 
to go out on the front drive and comb the gravel into nice patterns. <laughs> comb the gravel? Who, who are we expecting, Mother? The Mikado? <laughs> and I want the front doorstep so you could eat your dinner off it. Ah, it's the Pope. <laughs> He's coming to kiss it. Yeah. No, no. It's not the Pope. Oh. He'd be easy enough. He wouldn't run his finger along the picture rail like your cousin Maud. <laughs> cousin Maud, goodness me. She's buried four husbands, hasn't she? Only two of them were hers. <laughs> Only one of them was dead. <laughs> Her grandchild has been christened this afternoon. You're supposed to be godfather. Oh, sort out those biscuits. It's all you're good for. Sort out? What do you mean sort out, Mother? What do you mean by that? Well, they're broken biscuits. I want you to match the two halves. <laughs> Oh, I see. Stick them together with Bostick, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> then we could eat them and sniff them at the same time. Why anyone should want you to be a godfather, I shall never know. You're no more than a child yourself. I'm Forty-three, mother. And I hope Dr. Garth brings his king. Dr. Garth? <laughs> Dr. Garth, I thought he was dead. At least I hoped he was. <laughs> Your old headmaster. Dr. Garth is Maud's cousin, once removed. Once is not enough, Mother. <laughs> Dr. Garth used to terrify me, terrify me. I used to hide under the bedclothes because of Dr. Garth. Nonsense. He's got a first-class mind. When I was in 4L, Mother, it was Dr. Garth that knocked out Dudley Milwatt's glass eye. <laughs> He's a short-sighted sadist. He caned the window cleaner twice. <laughs> Excited, you'll bring up your breakfast. <laughs> the curried sago, do you mean? I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Be quiet. Now then, when your old headmaster arrives, yes. I want you to talk properly, not jabber and splutter like you used to. Oh, I don't. That's 30 years ago, Mother. A lot of poo sticks have gone under the bridge since then. <laughs> I started even lying about my age now. I mean, you're just a silly little boy, staying out late at night. It was 2.15 when you came in this morning, and you were ravenously hungry. You didn't hear me go to the larder, did you? I know, you must have heard my tummy rumbling on the landing. It's a girl, isn't it? Possibly. Right, I've, uh, I've done the front door, Matt. I put cardinal polish on the word welcome. <laughs> it's very legible. And, um, I switch the taps around. The hot says hot, and the cold says the British Rail. <laughs> you can't have everything. I've done my very best with the uh, toilet flush. You have to pull it twice, surprise it the third time, <laughs> and hold it down for a count of 19. Did you go to the bathroom and squeeze out your loofah? <laughs> Not since the old king died. <laughs> well, do it then. I don't want Maud finding a nasty, soggy loofer in my house. Oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> What's her name? Who's, it? Who's this, Mum? This girl person. This young lady, this woman, is called Fenella. She lives on a narrow boat. Couldn't afford a wide one, I suppose. <laughs> Kind of girl. What do you mean that kind of girl? All anorak and no knickers. <laughs> oh, mother, really? She has got knickers, too. How do you know? I took them to the laundrette for her. How dare you go to a public place with a strange woman's knickers? <laughs> people will think they could be mine. We don't care what people think, really. We? We, Fenella and I, we are free spirits, Mother. She roams the length and breadth of the country. She's a Romany of the waterways. I've told you not to play with gypsies. <laughs> you told me not to play with the boy next door, Mother. I mean, you told me he was beneath me, didn't you? Look where he is now. Michael Foots Taylor. <laughs> there you are, unemployed, I told you. <laughs> Mother, I don't have to ask you permission for who I play with. I do not want to play with Dr. Garth. But I do, however, want to play with Fenella. Well, I hope you're taking precautions. <laughs> what? Wearing a life jacket.
wearing? <laughs> Hello. What a coincidence. <laughs> it's me. Where's the inflatable, then? Uh, well, I've got the christening later on today. I'll pick it up later on. Do you like the paintwork? I finished it. <laughs> Took me a little time. Till when? Oh, not too long. Two o'clock. What are you punishing yourself for? Look, there's a great load of washing up in here, floating in cold, greasy water. You could come and do it all with a, a piece of moss and a twig or something. Could I? <laughs> Shut up! Oh, sorry. Whistling at sea. Unlucky, I forgot. <laughs> I treat you terribly. No, you don't, Fen. Don't call me Fen. Oh, sorry. What are you doing here? And don't tell me you've been locked out of your digs again, because I won't believe you. Now I've got the builders in. Fitting a new B-Day. <laughs> Olympic-sized. <laughs> the last one wore out. <laughs> You're the kind who's got a mother who orders him around. Oh, that's really... No, to be absolutely frank, uh, my mother is a trifle on the dead side. Who was the woman you were holding hands with in the supermarket? Uh, my landlady. Her walking frame was in having its M.O.T. You put a tube of Smarties in the trolley and she slapped you. Second childhood. Who's? Hers, hers. There we are. That's that all done. The water. Everything in shape, Bristol fashion. Lovely. Now I shall get on with this ironing over here. No, thanks. Why, right, Joe, that's a bit small. Must look very tight when it's on. <laughs> Lovely thought, though. <laughs> That's Judy's. What, a small friend, Judy? No, Judy. Punch and Judy. Oh. Look, Tim, I don't want any more jobs done. Just go home. Yes, don't you worry. I shall do. Your word is my command. Not just because I tell you to. All right, if you want me to come back, I shall do that. <laughs> I hate myself when you're around. What? I see your little face, all anxious to please. All I want to do is slap it. <laughs> I knew you felt motherly towards me. <laughs> slap away, be my guest. I knew you liked me, I could tell. Yesterday, yes. I told you to go and jump in the canal, and you did. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, because uh, I love you, I suppose. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> there you are, you see. <laughs> I do. I've got enough troubles of my own without taking you on, Timothy. I've got all these puppets to look after. Would it be like taking on another puppet, wouldn't it? How can you speak like that about yourself? No wonder I treat you badly. Look at you now. What's that? You stand there, twiddling yourself. Oh, I'm not twiddling myself. Good heavens. You sound like my mother. <laughs> mother? The one that's dead? No, the second one. She married again. Oh. I knew there was something. That's why you irritate me so much. You're a mother's boy. Oh, <laughs> not that would be the day. A mother's boy, good heavens. I got a tweed hat with a feather in it. <laughs> oh, a hat with a feather. Hmm. Yes, I thought you reminded me of somebody. Pinocchio. <laughs> You've never cut the strings. I have, I have. Goodness me, I could, I will, I will. You wouldn't know how. Wouldn't I? Just you watch. I shall pack my bag and leave home now. Goodbye, Mother, forever. Mind the rope that stretched the rope. <laughs> you can use the same towel as yesterday. <laughs> Who is it? It's me, Mother. Have you wiped your feet? <laughs> no, Mother, I've wiped my feet for the last time in this house. I'm leaving home forever. Packing my bag and going, Mother. Just the one case, that's all I need. I... <laughs> what are you doing in here, Father? Reading, Timothy. Uh, Read? What are you... Reading what? The meter. <laughs> Damn boring, hasn't moved much. You're only supposed to read it once, Father. Come out. No, 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 I can't. Your mother's put me in here. I, I'm in disgrace. <laughs> Maud pulled the chain and it came off in her hand. Is Maud here, then? Is it a, a fancy dress christening? No, no, no. I fell in the canal, Father. Well, again? Yes, again, yes, again. Will you come out, Father? You know, I want the suitcase. I'm leaving home, do you understand? Oh, leaving home? Yes. 
Well, the, uh, the weather forecast's not too good, Timothy. <laughs> Tyree, 996 and falling. No, it's just Fenella and I. We're leaving together, you see. We travel our own sunshine. We're travelling very light, as a matter of fact. Just a pocket full of greens. Can I come? <laughs> Why not, Father? Three can live as cheaply as one. I'll go and get my post office book. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, oh, Dr. Garth. Oh, Dr. Garth. You, you sent for me in your office. Do you remember you always did that? You always sent for me in the office, sir. Do you remember that? And you used to stand there without moving a muscle and I would jump about all the time. <laughs> Shall I do a hundred lines, sir? Shall I do that? I promise I won't cheat. I've given the pen away with the five nibs. <laughs> it wasn't mine anyway. It was Dogberry's in the fifth remove. And, sir, sir, I did put the school cat in the refrigerator. It was me. And I, I did paint the uh, tortoise blue. And it was me who did a naughty word of the crocuses on the lawn, sir. <laughs> Poo! I did, sir. Sorry, sir. Were Sorry, you sir. in my school? <laughs> yes, sir. Lumsden, sir. Was it you or your brother who was killed in the war? <laughs> Must be me, sir. I didn't have a brother. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes. You're not that damn cheeky boy with the glass eye. Who, sir? Me, sir? Why, sir? No, sir. No, that, that was the window cleaner, sir. Can I have it on the other hand, sir, please? Oh! Uh, Timothy. Oh. Talk to Dr. Garth properly. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Garth. He's rather underdeveloped. <laughs> I'll get Nurse to paint him violet. <laughs> We're meant to be going to a christening, Timothy. Why are you dressed in rompers? You're not the baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's highly strong. <laughs> Timothy, hmm? that big pom-pom on your flies, John Dunn. <laughs> Awkwardly. Mother, I'm 43. You know, I'm a grown man. I'm about to leave home. Do you understand? For good. Honour thy mater, Lumsden. Oh, be quiet, you. I don't... Wait a minute. I'm not frightened of you. I can talk perfectly normally to you. You are a stupid old man. Don't speak to Dr. Garth like that. I am leaving home, Mother. You're a silly woman. Don't speak to your mother like that. Look, I can speak. I'm not the bloody window cleaner, you know. Language, Timothy. Oh, so much for you leaving home, Father. You're a real old windbag. Don't speak, speak to your, your father like that. that. I can't stand any more of this. <laughs> silly animal. Don't, Don't speak to the cat like that. <laughs> Any more for the Skylark? Language, Timothy! <laughs> I thought you'd be pleased. Why? Well, you said cut the strings. You got thrown out. Well, it adds up to the same thing. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. We're both free to roam like vagabonds. Raggle-taggle gypsy, though. You're wearing a suit. Uh I've got to go to the christening first, you see. Do you think you could, uh, give me a lift? <coughs> oh, all right. This is the shawl for the baby. <laughs> Used to belong to me until a couple of years ago. <laughs> nice car, this, isn't it? Very SDP. <laughs> Do they really run on olive oil? Bell top. Oh, oops. <laughs> Uh. Oh. What's that? <laughs> I've run over a duck. Is, is that unlucky then? <laughs> you make me do this talking all the time. Oh, he's, he's only stunned, poor little so He's stunned. I'll give him beat to beat resuscitation. Don't be silly. I'll take you to the vets. Put it in the car. Right. Ah. Keep them warm and still. On this scarf of yours. Plenty of warm, sweet tea. Oh, do shut up. I love it when you talk to me like that. Why? Why? No, oh, it's so sort of intimate. <laughs> like home. I thought you'd left. I have, I have. Forward to the duck doctor. The quack doctor. <laughs> to grant all these things that ye have prayed for. Which promise he, for his part, will most surely... Is incense I can smell? Or your aftershave? <laughs> Therefore, after this promise made by Christ, this infant is also faithfully, for his part, promise by you that are his sureties, that he will renounce the devil and all his works, and constantly believe in God's holy of yours off, Kevin. We don't and want the yellow rose of Texas ruining this sacred moment. I demand, therefore, dost thou, in the name of this child, 
Renounce the devil and all his works? Uh, yes, yes, I do, basically, yes. I, uh... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. The vain pomp and the glory of the world with all covetous desires of the same, about halfway down, page 267. <laughs> and the carnal desires of the flesh, so that thou wilt not follow nor be led by them. Um, I renounce them all. Yes, here, here, I would agree with that. Yes, <laughs> the bridge, Timothy. Sorry, Father, sorry. I don't know this person. It's me, Mother. Be quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vicar. Do go on. Wilt thou be baptized in this faith? <laughs> Pardon? Sorry? No. Was that the baby? It certainly wasn't, thank you, Phyllis. I'm sorry, Maud. I thought I heard it quack. Nobody on our side of the family quacks. What you do is your affair. Wilt thou be baptized in this faith? Uh. That is my desire. Yes, I've got my place back. Sorry, could I have the question again? Sorry. Chris, <laughs> there's a duck in here somewhere. It's not in the font, is it? <laughs> it's in that bag of yours. Have you brought a duck in here? No, no, that's a present. It's my present. A duck? You brought the baby a duck, you <laughs> buffoon? No, no, it's the shawl. It's a shawl. I didn't carry ducks around. Goodness me, until today. Oh dear, the duck probably got into the bag in the car. Oh. Is someone doing farmyard impressions? <laughs> it's over there in the bag. I'm going to get it out. Look, don't move that muscle. I don't want Maud thinking it's anything to do with us. Just ignore it. Heavens, where is the poor thing? We didn't hear anything, thank you. <laughs> Shall we get on? Any normal family would simply take the thing outside. You're not family, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Nor's the duck. <laughs> oh, yes. Very nice coming from you, Muriel. Three months gone at the wedding. Oh, she does it. No thanks to you. That's the <laughs> Perhaps the innocent creature is left over from the harvest festival. <laughs> Shall we concentrate on the ministry of baptism? Bringing a duck into God's house. They brought it in, Vicar. If it comes to that, your husband blows his nose like a camel. <laughs> Name this child. Richard Lionel. <laughs> Gordon Bennett. Richard Lionel <laughs> Gordon Bennett. All right, I will admit it. It is my fault. I did bring the duck in. It is in the bag. But let us all forgive and forget, shall we? I am going now, finally and forever. Farewell, you all. Timothy's made a shambles of the whole thing. Yes. And have you seen Maud's face? She's fuming. What a lovely christening. <laughs> I've done it. I've left the straight society forever. Where's that duck? I get all the way to the He's vets. Better. He's better. He's in here. It's a sign, Bella. We're free. You and I and the duck can fly away forever. Let the poor thing go. No, why don't you take him down to the canal? I'm just going to make home. Oh, home. Still home, is it? For the money, for the inflatable. We'll float away. We're free. We'll fly south for the winter. <laughs> oh, Jerry, has, has mother, mother been in this morning? No, she might have been. Oh, no, I went back to the flat and I... Wait a minute, that's my muffin again. And the pig. She has been in. She's sold with these again. All right, she was in here lunchtime. Yeah, now keep off. But look, there's been a bit of a mistake, you see, because there's 80 pounds in this pig belonging to Fenella. Oh, well, if you want that pig, it'll cost you a tenner. Tenner, all right, then. All right, all right. So relieved, because it was... So, wait a minute, how do I get it out? There's no, uh, there's no rubber navel on this. Uh, break it. Break it? Can I, uh, will I break it here? Wait a minute, uh, can I borrow this? The shillelagh. <laughs> Souvenir of Killarney. There we are, stand by. Wait a minute. It's empty. There's nothing there. Where's the money? I don't know. You're sure this is the pig my mother sold you, aren't you? Could be this one. <laughs> but that's the same as the other one. Yeah, well, I thought you preferred a cheaper one. That one's 15 quid. <laughs> 15 quid, but it's the same as this one. Oh, yeah, well, there's more of a demand all of a sudden. <laughs> I see. Right. right, then. I'll have this one as well, then. All right. 
down there either. Where's, where's the money? Try this one. <laughs> well, that's the last one. Twenty quid. Twenty quid? But why? Only one of its kind remaining. <laughs> you know what you take me for? I do. <laughs> I have this one as well. Nothing in there either. This is empty as well. Where's the money? Right, that's uh, 45 quid you owe me. Oh, tell a lie. 50. You've damaged the shillelagh, so you've got to buy that. <laughs> I want you to clear a room for me. The small room. Just a bed, a wardrobe, a chest of drawers, and one small boy's assorted clothing. Mother, what have you done with the 80 pounds? It is. We... <laughs> I found these well, under the floorboards. The Health and Efficiency Christmas Annual 1954 <laughs> and the Charles Atlas course. Completely <laughs> unused. Mother, mother, how did you get the £80 out of the pig? Well, I just slipped my tweezers in, rolled up the notes and slipped them out again. Oh, what a silly place to put money. Somebody's got to be grown up about this sort of thing. 50p a lot. Right, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Mother, 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 you do realise, don't you, that I'm leaving home forever, you know, packing my bags and going. You know, I won't be in the house again, or indeed my room. Well, you can't be. Mr. Abigopo's in there. Oh, he's such a nice young man. He's got a three-piece suit and a high, stiff collar to go to the job centre. A lodger, mother, already? Oh, with Jerry. Give me... A price on this, would you? Mother, that's a photograph of me. That's the only one you've got, Mother. Yes, and I don't like it. <laughs> oh, five for the frame. Oh, done. And you won't want this. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Mother, you see, it can't all end like it. Mother. <coughs> 43 years of my life I have given to her. 43 years, and it's got to end like this. <laughs> What's she going to do? <laughs> Who's she going to lick wash now? The cat, I suppose. <laughs> She'll have to totter out into the garden and slap the sparrows. <laughs> right, that's uh, oh, 50 quid you owe me for breakages. Mm. What about uh, muffin? 30 quid. Right, there we are. 80 quid and all. There we are, Jake. This is the start of my new life as a wandering puppeteer. And once aboard the lugger, the girl is mine. Ha <laughs> ha! Pinocchio! Here, don't you mean Geronimo? Children's <laughs> <laughs> Waterways Puppet Theatre, ahoy! Inflatable cargo coming alongside. Permission to come aboard. Kindly ask before you borrow my car. I had to pick up this inflatable thing for Fenella. She's popped off. Briefly. So, the rover returns. Yes, Mother. Did you enjoy the travelling life? Hedgehogs cooked in their jackets and so on? <laughs> well, get that inflatable thing out of my car. Yes, Mother. Oh, God! <laughs>